Hello, welcome back to Pen Talk. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for selecting my channel and picking my video amongst the billions that are available on YouTube. I appreciate that and I hope to provide you with some visually entertaining experience. Today we see in front of us what I've described as the cutest pen of 2021. It's going to be controversial as is anything that you're going to say is the est of the thing, biggest, smartest, tallest, whatever. So I got a recent addition to my first two Q1s. I now have a green one. And it is as impressive as the brown one I had. And I've had the clear one inked up since day one. And it has continued to provide me with a good writing experience. So we're going to delve in to the new pen, compare it to the original ones that I have, and hopefully show you why it's the cutest pen. The crabs are working overtime holding up these thick pens, but they enjoy it. It's their work. They enjoy working. They don't get unemployment, so this is their only job. We're going to let Mr. Crab wink at you. You can barely see him. And we're going to go on to more. This is the box the pen came in, and we'll notice that that brand identification has now changed. Here's what the original box looked like. But the saying at the bottom has stayed the same. We flip it over we'll see the standard inventory label. We'll give you a translation. They refer to the pen as Emerald and it's a, a 3F so it's the third version fine nib. The lid comes off, just pulls off and it's pretty stable. It's a well-made box, very nice, very giftable. They haven't uh, updated the name on the instruction manual, which is a generic instruction manual that covers every pen that they make and all different filling systems. And it's just, I think it's well done. And we have English on the other side. And they also talk about cleaning, which is one of the things that I really like about the Chinese pens if they certainly have emphasized the cleaning part of owning a pen, which is equally important to the filling part. We see the nice pen in this classic cellophane sleeve. Unique sound. As we saw before, and we'll see again, this resin is just mind-blowing to me. Oh, I forgot about you get an eyedropper with a nice red bulb on the end. So the cap comes off in a little less than two turns. And we'll see a nice number six nib. It's two-tone. And it really looks small compared to that dimensions of the section and dimensions of the pen. I just think it's great that they matched the other resin with that nice cracked ice resin that they made the cap out of. The pen all comes apart. The nib unit unscrews. It's easy to swap the nib if you want. We'll see the nice two O-rings there on that nib assembly. And obviously the section unscrews because you'll need to do that to fill the pen and look at how thick that resin is. I'm just impressed with the sturdiness and the build of this pen and the way all the parts just really work together. I think they did an excellent job and there's that O-ring and I like the fact that the O-ring is between the ink which sits up here and the section so it precludes link any ink coming out but I would silicone grease all these threads and all these O-rings anyway just with a little bit not a lot. And of course the threads there at the end of the section, again it doesn't impede your use of the pen. So that's the bits and parts. 
I don't really feel like inking this up right now, but we'll just take a look at how the extra fine nib in the clear one writes. And looking through the descriptions on eBay, I noticed that the nibs are different styles. You know, the fine one here is a two-tone, where the extra fine one is just a plain silver tone one. You can definitely see that difference in the tipping material between those two nibs. Which Moon Man, I think, has done an excellent job with their new version of these number six nibs. They certainly are attractive from a design viewpoint, and they still have the old Moon Man designation. We're going to show this incredible pen rotating so you can appreciate this amazing green based cracked ice mosaic stained glass look that they've used for the cap. Those of you that might be familiar with poured resins, this thickness is much thicker, the greater diameter than most other resins, so don't know where they found this extra large piece of resin, but I'm happy. I think we need to look at the brown one as a comparison. The brown one is nice, but it doesn't have the variety of color that the green one does. It's certainly that nice cracked ice, and it certainly has a fair of variety in those chips that are used in the resin. We'll put them side by side so you can see the differences and the similarities between the resins that was used. And the fact that the other parts of the pen match the color scheme of this amazing resin they used for the cap. Feast your eyes and behold a great resin. So you may ask, is this the biggest pen? And I would say absolutely not. Here's an example of a Japanese eyedropper pen that was popular maybe in the 30s, 40s, 50s, somewhere in that range. There are a number of people who look at these pens as being good for people with arthritis that have trouble with a small section. Well, it's up to you to decide that. Let's take a look at Cap Off. With cap off, the size difference becomes even more pronounced. And yes, these are not great posters. They do post. If you press it on really hard, it'll stay, but it can easily come off. So if you have a pen that you need to post, and this obviously from a lengthwise is more comfortable posted. They have a similar design, very thick section, large number six nibs, which look small compared to the size of the pen, but you know, it's a design that's been around for a long time. I think it has limited use. I wouldn't want to write my first novel with this pen, but for carrying around for notes, I think it's great. And as a conversation piece, it's even greater. So in my early days of collecting, I lived in Manhattan, New York City, and one of my favorite weekend trips was to go to Canal Street and peruse the many shops there selling a lot of junk, but I like junk. So these are three pens that I picked up. You know, they were probably under $10 a piece, probably closer to five. They're heavy metal, they're enameled, they look bizarre. But I just wanted to show in comparison to the Q1. They're not usable writing instruments. Here's an example of a cartridge that they came with. They were not something you were going to eyedropper. And there's what's left of ink in a cartridge after 50 years. You know, I bought these in the 70s. I just thought you'd like to see a comparison of what I used to collect back in the day. So here's what the pens look like with the cap off. You know, just a, not a section that I enjoyed and just a basic iridium point nib. And these were very, very heavy pens. And if you drop them, this is what the nib looks like after dropping. No, that wasn't the way the nib was designed. 
but not something I corrected because I never enjoyed writing with these. We'll give you the dimensions of the pen just so you can put it in perspective. And now let's take a look at how the clear one with the extra fine nib writes. So this is my first uh, Q1 I reviewed. I'll put a link to that review. So I figured we would just show you this one writing. I've had this inked up and I do enjoy writing with it. I haven't been out and about much so I haven't taken it around but you know that ink stayed very well within that pen. Mostly it's stored this way on my desk but it does spend some time horizontal and it does some, spend some time in my hand. You could potentially use this for short writing without posting and you can jam the cap on and it stays on with that clear resin I just think it's it's amazing how that dome at the top really works as a magnifying glass I mean I wanted this in transparent because I just think it's a great design and you get to see all the bits and pieces in the transparent pen and you get to see the ink slosh around See how this extra fine nib lays down a Birmingham copper chloride ink. I thought I had copper chloride, but I actually put in Birmingham Glassmith into the clear Q1. It's a similar color, but the copper chloride is a little bit more on the green side. It's a little bit more on the blue side. And the chromatography shows us no water resistance. Just a clean color. I like this ink, and I like most Birmingham inks. Well, all of Birmingham inks. I mean, for an extra fine nib, this works well. I'm not an extra fine person, but when I'm taking notes on crappy paper, this pen works well for that. And it actually works okay in a letter. I definitely like this Birmingham Copper Chloride. Uh, the color is just perfect for my view of a nice kind of in the turquoise family. So that's how this writes. The fine nib would just be basically the same with just a slightly wider line as we saw from the close-up of the nibs. We've reached the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this video finds you safe, healthy, and happy. Enjoying your pens, enjoying your inks, enjoying your paper. Just having fun. Ah, that's what's fun. Finding another use for the finial at the bottom of the barrel. So we've reached the end of this video. Put some ink on paper. We're going to say bye. See you soon. Stay tuned.